did. Uh, welcome everybody to the Festival of the Future. If it's your first event in the festival, um, uh, an especially big welcome to you. Thanks for joining us um, uh, in Dorset. Uh, it's it's lovely to be able to share our beautiful Dorset scenery and um, so on with you wherever you are across the country or across the, road, uh, uh, the world. I know that we've got a few people joining us from London at least. Um, uh, and maybe people from from further further afield as well. Um, festival is in its third day. We've had two fantastic days of great activity, great sessions, people engaging really well, um, a fantastic variety of activity and uh, events and sessions and things that we've covered, lots of good engagement and uh, lots of good questions. So um, we hope that today is going to be just as good. We've got some, some really good speakers coming up and we've got some particularly good ones today. So um, this is all about full fibre and why we need a full fibre, fully fibred Dors Dorset. Uh, we already have pretty good super fast coverage in Dorset, uh, but we need more. The government says we ne need more. Um, uh, and we know we need more. Businesses are telling us that what we've got so far isn't enough for all of them. And we know that to do the things that we need to do to make Dorset a fully digital Dorset, which is our aim, um, we need full fibre everywhere. So Margaret Honora is from DCMS. She's joining us from DCMS and she's going to tell us the government's um, the, the government's. Uh, uh, view and vision for a fully fibred country and what that means for Dorset. Uh, and Connie Dixon is joining us from Openreach. Openreach is one of the suppliers that works in Dorset. Um, it is it, it probably accounts for the majority of the work, but we had, do have other other suppliers working in Dorset too. Uh, and Connie's going to talk to us about Openreach's experience in providing full fibre networks. Uh, in other places um, and what's going to happen in Dorset too. So um, please do tweet out of the event using the hashtag FutureFest uh, and after the event as well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please pop them in the chat bar uh, and we'll come to them at the end. Uh, if you have abs something absolutely burning to ask that can't wait, um, stick your hand up. But really, we prefer if you don't mind to wait till the end. So just put them in the chat bar and I can scroll through and uh, come to you at the end. Um, beyond that, you know, sit back, uh, enjoy the session. I'm going to hand over to Margaret now. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Penny um, and, and Margaret and Nora. I am the regional lead for the southern region, head of the southern region in BD UK, which is part of DCMS. And I'm absolutely delighted to be presenting to you today as part of the Festival for the Future within Dorset. Um, just um, going um, through, uh, I'll just briefly take you through a, a few um, uh, a brief agenda. Um, as, as Penny mentioned, um, I'll be talking about the, our vision and mission and I'll be giving you a short case pace on where we are with existing programmes as well. And I'll be talking about our strategy and why we're doing all this, why we're doing full fibre. And I'll be touching on some new um, products that we'll be introducing, like hubs and um, outside in. I'll be, I'll be mainly concentrating on design side um, interventions such as hubs and vouchers. And then I'll talk about how we're actually, how as a team we're getting ready for this, how we're, you know, boosting the team and, you know, increasing the uh, resourcing levels to deliver this vast um, uh, program, gigabit program. Now, hopefully technology is um, on my side today and I just want to try and share my presentation. So, just bear Hopefully everybody can see that. Yeah, um, that's good to me, Margaret. Well done. Thank you. Brilliant. Fantastic. OK, so this um, this first slide here, is, it, it uh, details our vision and mission. Our vision is for everyone in the UK um, to benefit from a better connection to their digital world. 
and the mission is to ensure every UK home and business can access fast and reliable digital connectivity. Now, to achieve our mission, we need as many players in the industry as possible. We need as many players in the industry to make that, you know, this gigabit program happen. Now, you would have heard earlier in the week from Wessex International, um, who are quite prevalent in the um, Southwest. And after, after this presentation, you'll be hearing from Connie Dixon from OpenReach. Um, so basically, what I want to emphasize is that, you know, there are only two players in the markets. There are other ISPs such as Jurassic Fiber, City Fiber, uh, Virgin Media and Juice Broadband, who are already active in the Southwest. And long may that continue, but, you know, we need more players in to make it all happen. So um, just change it. There's not much of a, um, not a very smooth change, I'm afraid. Um, so just pushing forward a, a couple of slides. So basically, um, just a, a quick update on the existing programmes. Um, Superfast is our oldest, uh, is the oldest of our programmes, and there's a 1.9 million billion pounds invested as of July this year. And just over 5,000 premises have been passed, and of these, 460,000 are full fibre. And there's around 900 million new procurements um, in this, you know, in this part, um, this financial year, and that, you know, translates into 470,000 additional premises. Um, there are various completion dates for each of the contracts within Superfast, the last ones being in 2024. So moving on to uh, rural gigabit connectivity. Uh, this was a, a programme that was born of the LFFN programme, um, and that has a £200 million budget. Just over a 1,000 public buildings have been contracted, and you know, um, nearly 300 more are in the pipeline. So far... Um, 72 buildings have been completed, and um, the future prospect list is, um, uh, um, you know, uh, there's already a future prospect list for the next financial year. And that program is due to finish uh, March next year. So local full fibre network, that's the, the program that I lead, as well as being the southern, southern regional lead. Uh, we've got a 278 um, million pound budget, and that includes of uh, the, the, the uh, LFFM vouchers as well. We've got 36 projects in flight at the moment across the UK, and 34 of those are actually in the build phase. And basically there are about 7,000 um, public buildings, and that includes Dorset Libraries, which is um, making good progress. And the whole Local for Fibre Network programme is due to um, complete in September next year. Um, and the voucher scheme, there are, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the, the LFFM voucher scheme is now closed, but the RGC voucher scheme is still um, wide open. There have been uh, nearly 100 million committed to date, over 48,000 vouchers have been issued, and over 31,000 have already been connected. And for um, the house different vouchers, there are various um, values of the vouchers, and for Dorset, it's one of the higher ones. We've got two and a half um, thousands um, uh, um, maximum for uh, residential properties and six thousand pounds for uh, SMEs. And the current scheme ends in March next year. Also, we have the seven hundred megahertz spectrum clearance, um, four hundred million pounds investments, and over a thousand transmitters, of which three serve the Dorset and Southwest area, totaling about one and a half million homes. Um, there are hundreds, up to 160,000 aerials that were either realigned or replaced. And we're pleased to say that that uh, programme completed in August of this year. So our strategy. So the gov government's manifesto was to cover every single home and business in the UK with gigabit capable broadband services. Now, in March this year, the Chancellor confirmed that the government will pump £5 billion into the plan to roll out full fibre across the UK. And it forms part of the levelling up um, agenda and the response to COVID. Now, um, broadband has come into its own during COVID, hasn't it? Um, you know, and uh, I mean, what we have done with that broadband during this crisis. The, um, you know, the, um, our, uh, our um, uh, 
DCMF, DCMS overall objectives tie in with the manifesto. Um, and also there's wide, you know, cross white or wide interest in digital infrastructure. And I'll stress again that we need as many players in the industry to deliver on the manifesto. So why broadband is important for Dorset? As mentioned before, COVID is coming to its own during this crisis. It's fundamentally changed the way we, we live our lives and the role tech plays within it. And gigabit, gigabit capability will transform Dorset, driving productivity, promoting inclusive, sustainable growth within the area. The extra capability and capacity of um, uh, Gigabit will provide a robust support for the ever-evolving technology, which will drive growth in the wider economy. By ensuring that Dorset um, has the right digital infrastructure and skills for everyone to access digital tech. So I've uh, listed a few there on the, uh, uh, on the slide there. So you've got local industry, transform industry, and we're already seeing that, aren't we? you know, through the number of people that are working from home. Also, schools and education, um, you know, I can speak, personally speaking, I mean, my youngest is, um, you know, he's, he's been affected by this, as we all have, and he's had lots of online lessons during lockdown. And also, you know, the, it transforms our health institutions. That, you know, remote doctor's appointments were unheard of before COVID. So um, the gigabit strategy, now we have a number of measures such as barrier busting to support the implementation of the estimated 80% of the um, areas that will be com um, covered by commercial uh, commercial colleagues for gigabit capable network delivery. So we're concentrating on the final 20% of premises in those hard to reach areas, you know, and those um, areas where there is um, broadband speeds of less than 30 meg. And these are scattered all over the country. And you'll see on the map on the right hand side that, um, you know, the final, you know, you know, there's plenty of red areas in the southwest and they represent the, the, the high proportion of, you know, rural areas in hard to reach areas. Um, the future telecoms review of, the, of 2018 recommended that we target these, uh, these areas, you know, we roll out, uh, we prioritise rolling out in those areas that are most in need by without, you know, 30 meg or, or uh, broadband or better. And our approach is to, will be to focus public funding for the hardest to reach premises first. So this slide here illustrates the two sides of invent, uh, interventions. You've got the demand side and the supply side. Now the operators demand side mechanisms, so the hubs and vouchers to expand the commercial build areas into more uncommercial areas and um, it'd be, we in BD UK will run supply side procurements so such as super fast and outside in outside in is a, a new product that's based on you know it, it's based on the super fast model um, and we'll be running you know supply side um, uh, procurements in sparse areas prioritizing those with um, less than 30 meg speeds um, the UK wide coverage will be achieved by using a mixture of interventions to secure coverage area, area by area. In practice, that might mean supporting super fast completion, launching an early procurement of public sector hubs across the country, stimulating, you know, and, and use and the use of vouchers, potentially with you know using voucher top-up schemes, and starting outside in procurements um, near near towns, but avoiding active outer areas. Though. And also completing the region with um, bundle procurements that will mop up the uh, remaining uh, five, um, areas in the final 20%. So, um, so um, hubs, if we, if we just talk about hubs and that's based on the, hubs is a new product, it's based on the LFFN and RGC model. And we're predicting about between 5,000 and 10,000 hubs connected. And that will translate into 150,000 premises connected indirectly. So, um, so just talk about um, uh, the benefits that the hubs will have. Now, we're, uh, you know, we've learned lessons from LFFN in tracking benefits for hubs. Although it's, we we do appreciate it can be quite 
difficult and challenging. Now, the LSFM program, socio-economic benefit templates, act as a framework to give um, structure to the benefits and data collection management. So you'll have you know, direct site level benefits such as high speeds and low latency. And then you've got indirect site level benefits um, that, you know, that, for example, increase business productivity and local industry benefits such as the decrease in connectivity costs. And the, the graphs on the right hand side basically um, it excludes uh, the top one excludes cottage sites, but it just gives an indication of how many sites have already been completed under RGC and what's uh, contracting build in build for RGC and what's in the hub, the yellow bits there, or what's in the pipeline for hubs. So vouchers then. So with vouchers, we're forecasted to deliver about um, 350,000 uh, to deliver to 350,000 premises. And that's in addition to what's um, currently in place, um, the 22 million pound top up to boost the total of 17 councils in England. And that includes Dorset there. Um, so, um, you know, the list of 17,000 can be 17 councils can be um, seen there on the left hand side. So basically, that's the programme. How are we actually getting ready within BD UK to deliver this programme? So um, this um, uh, slide ba basically indicates um, the sort of um, structure. We've reorganised our structure uh, um, within BD UK to actually support the programme. Because we've learned from, pre and we, um, you know, we have a strong emphasis in, in regional um, relationships, regional delivery. Because we've learned from previous programmes that you know, the importance of local relationships. So we're re increasing our regional presence. And there's, it's divided up into four regions. So the red regions will represent the devolved nations. Uh, the green regions are the northern region, the blue region is the central region, and the yellow bits, the, area, the yellow areas are my areas, the southeast and the southwest. And each region will have a, a regional head. So I'm head of the south, I'll, be, I'll have peers in the devolved north and um, the central regions as well. And they'll do further divide into nine areas. Um, and that will include the three default um, nations, that would be three areas, and plus the east and west components of each of the northern, central and southern regions. And we're looking to hire people, um, you know, for the area delivery managers that, you know, that live in those areas. So they have a vested interest in delivering the projects. So we are looking to um, recruit ADLs in the southwest area, for example. Now, each of the area delivering um, uh, leads will be accountable for their area and they will have their own delivery targets and their own KPIs rolling up into the regional targets. So local team, local focus and local partnership. Um, each um, area delivery lead will have a team of local delivery leads and local delivery managers. Now, um, they are basically equivalent to the project directors that we have today. The new recruits into the local delivery leads and local delivery managers will be managing projects in the areas where they live for the uh, reasons I mentioned before, they'll have a vested interest. Um, that, so the new organization and the new regional facility, uh, you know, they'll have, you know, they'll have a vested um, interest in that, that area. So, so, so I've skipped a slide, slide there. So basically, this um, uh, slide um, emphasizes the fact that we have, um, uh, uh, you know, we'll have hubs to support that um, uh, lo local, um, uh, you know, local um, network. So we, we've got hubs across the a country. We, uh, the hubs will provide a network of modern, digitally enabled shares and shared workplaces. Um, also, uh, I must emphasize that, that um, the LDLs and L LDMs will have fewer local bodies to actually um, manage, so that, that further emphasizes the, you know, the, the, the focus on the regional delivery. So you will know people in BDUK pers well, personally. You'll have, you know, you'll have a, a, you know, a, a person dedicated to your area that you know, will know all about the projects in your area. Anyway, back to the hubs. The hubs, um, there'll be four hubs. Um, four hubs have already actually been opened and then there's 30 more to be announced. 
Um, this network will continue to increase with further announcements as the hub numbers increases. So the new organisation and new regional facilities will aid us to, in keeping a focus on delivery and, uh, and you know, deliver the, the gigabit connectivity so that we can all benefit from it. So this is just a, a bit of a summary slide of what I've just uh, spoken to you about. I've, I've talked about our strategy, why we're doing this, why it's important to resource it. I talked about the five billion pound gigabit programme and I introduced you to new um, um, products such as um, um, outside in and 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 hubs. Um, bearing in mind, we'll be you know rolling out these this gigabit program whilst managing the legacy programs such as Superfast. Um, how we're going to be doing it? We're going to have a mixture of inter interventions in each area, and also we're boosting up our resourcing levels within BD UK. That's me. I'll hand you over to Connie Dixon, which will. Um, and she'll explain what OpenReach are doing. Thank you, Margaret. Hello, good morning. So, yeah, I will uh, kick right off. So, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for, for organising this, Penny. Um, it's lovely to have the opportunity to talk about how the infrastructure that we're at OpenReach building across the UK will directly benefit the communities and residents of Dorset. So, I suspect that most people know who OpenReach are, but for those of you who don't, um, we're the UK's biggest network infrastructure builder, and we're on the mission to get the best broadband infrastructure, and that's full fibre, into as many homes and businesses in the UK as possible. But a lot has changed for us in the last few years. We became independent from BT two years ago and we operate what's called an open network. So we're a wholesaler and we work with more than 640 different retail providers. So that's the likes of Talk, Talk, Sky and EE. And they use our network. So that gives consumers really great choice. And we've been on a three year journey. So we're kind of pivoting from building traditional copper based networks to an ultra fast ultra reliable full fibre one. And we're building full fibre to 40,000 homes and businesses every week. But whilst we are a UK wide business, we're absolutely committed to the Southwest. And we already employ more than three and a half thousand people in the region. And that's mainly engineers that are on the front line who are kind of proud to build and maintain the network in their own communities. So, Lockdown's taught us a lot um, and it's made us appreciate things differently. So we've spent the last 10 years and £14 billion pounds investing in our network to get it to the place um, where during the added pressures of lockdown with homeworking and homeschooling, we have no network outages. Our network connects 31.8 million homes and businesses every day. And it's built to cope with large, amount, large amounts of traffic, which meant that it did stand up to the test of lockdown. But we do know that there's more to do. So alongside our existing partnerships with BD UK and Dorset Council and dozens of communities across the county, we've also announced a £12 billion investment to bring full fibre to 20 million homes and businesses by the mid to late 2020s. And I completely agree with you, Margaret. We do need more commitment to a balanced build across rural and urban areas, but OpenReach can't do that alone. And the industry needs to see a variety of builders in the market who all need to step up and do their bit for rural, coastal and harder to reach areas. So OpenReach is building to at least 3.2 million homes in the final third, as well as delivering projects like Digital Dorset, and we also have our community fibre partnerships, and that's a really great option for those of you who may not already be in a commercial rollout plan or a government funded plan. Like others in the industry, we are a business and we can't help the government to reach its target for non-commercial areas alone. So the UK needs the whole industry to step up and to play its part if we're going to reach the UK's ambition of, of a gigabit capable coverage by 2025. And that means that we need as many infrastructure builders as possible in the sector, playing their part and building in all communities across the UK. So why, why is it important? So our research tells us that 
fibre will be a key driver in leading the UK economy out of recession and into economic growth and has huge social benefits. But I'll touch on that a bit more later on. So what is full fibre? So fibre optic are strands of glass around one tenth the thickness of human hair and they transmit data using light signals and a single strand can serve up to 32 individual properties. And there are three main benefits of full fibre. So first of all, it's faster. Full fibre is what we call ultra fast. So it's 18 times faster than today's UK average broadband speeds. So that would allow a family of four to all stream ultra HD or 4K quality video simultaneously without waiting or buffing. And it's also more reliable. So it's much more reliable than traditional copper connections in that the signal isn't affected by external interference, whereas copper can be impacted by outside electrical signals. So, for example, electric fences or by and it's particularly impacted by lightning strikes, as we saw earlier this summer. Um, and fibre optic can also send a signal over 120 miles without any real loss of quality. And if we compare that to um, one mile on the copper network, where sometimes residents that are too far away from the cabinet will be unable to access decent broadband. And then thirdly, it's future proofed. So if we reflect years ago we used half the data that we do now and speeds were a third of what they are today so our full fiber network is future proofed so it's fit for the massive increase of data usage and new technologies that we'll see in the future and the design of the network allows us to dial it up when we need to in line with our ever-growing demand for data hungry services and applications so I've talked through what full fibre is, how it's different from copper and why we need it, but it's really important that we look at the potential economic benefits that a fully fibred UK and a fully fibred Dorset can have. And it's important to remind ourselves why. So the size of the prize, if you like, because the benefits are real and they are significant. So nationwide full fibre could reinvigorate the UK and it can be a key platform for our economic recovery. So even before the pandemic, uh, the Centre for Economics and Business Research explained how full fibre could boost UK productivity by £59 billion a year. And the regional benefit for the South West is estimated at £4.3 billion. And the research also highlighted how full fibre could bring up to half a million people back into the workforce and 40,000 of those being in the southwest. So that includes carers that can work remotely or ena en enabling an ageing population to work later in life, but also bring forward parents return to work. And it can also help to level up the UK and provide the foundation for a new wave of rural and coastal businesses, um, startups and innovation, which is so important in a county like Dorset. Full fibre can boost productivity. It enables cheaper broadband powered phone services and better access to cloud based computing services. But what does that mean? So, for example, full fibre connectivity combined with cloud computing means businesses can upload, they can store, they can access and download huge amounts of data in minutes instead of hours. And full fibre is also better for the environment. As we've seen through the pandemic, better connectivity and home working can slash carbon emissions for commuting. So the research suggests that by fibring up the whole of the UK, we could save 300 million commuting trips and reduce carbon emissions by 360,000 tonnes. And also the amount of electricity that you use to power the fibre is significantly less than that needed for copper cables. And let's not forget the wider social benefits. So those uh, improve public services, for example, you know, the potential for remote health consultations and education services, but also improve leisure facilities experienced from the home. So being able to live stream through digital devices and an improved home environment. So, you know, we can enable smart homes and more generally help to reduce social isolation. 
And these will be particularly valuable in more remote locations where digital connectivity is currently less well developed and physically accessing services is relatively difficult. So when you look at the social, the environmental and the economic benefits, it's a no brainer. Full fibre will help create a great future for the UK. Let's take a look at Salisbury. Uh, in March 2019, uh, Openreach announced that the historic city of Salisbury would become the entire city in the UK to have complete access to Openreach's full fibre broadband infrastructure. And we said we were going to build it in 12 months, and we did. With a lot of hard work, collaboration with the local authority, and using world first technology, it was the fastest citywide network build in the UK. And we are extremely proud of that. But you've heard enough from me. So um, let's hear from the people of Salisbury. And we've got a video to show you and hear from, from them directly. So I'm hoping that the video is going to start shortly. There we go, I'll go mute. We've got no sound, Sally. Sorry, Connie, stand by technical issues. I did click on sound, so just bear with me for a sec. Openreach approached us probably about 18 months ago to say, would we like Salisbury to be the first place in the country to be full fibre? And I said, yes, absolutely. Full fibre digital infrastructure will be a massive boost to productivity in the UK economy. This is about the network for today. It's about the network for tomorrow and probably the next 100 plus years. Salisbury's presented some fairly unique challenges for us, whether that's the you know type of cobblestones that we need to reinstate when we dig up the road or coming up with smaller kind of innovative connectorised block terminals that we can design more sympathetically to fit with some of the listed buildings. Openreach have really been sensitive to some of those concerns about where poles have to go out, what sort of boxes are used, um, how they're put on buildings. This will definitely benefit our small business community. I think it will open up new avenues of economic possibility. You can think that London would get out first, but here, you know, we are still connecting with the world here from Salisbury. I've got friends with businesses. They're going to benefit from it as well. People will work from home even when COVID is forgotten. Without the fibre broadband, there's no way we could have really efficiently operated our business from our homes. With great broadband, they can work effectively from home. It gives them better work-life balance. It reduces commuting. It's greener. But what we've achieved here, the, the kind of engineering, working with local authorities, working with the people of the city, that's provided us a blueprint that we can apply going forward. We did have an ambition to build to 15 million homes across the UK. That's all history. Um, we're now doing 20 million. So 20 million homes right across the UK by the mid to late 2020s and delivering what the country needs, which is world class infrastructure. Thank you, Sally. So it's great to hear firsthand from the residents and businesses about the huge impact our new network has had in improving their lives, whether it's keeping the whole family connected whilst they work and study from home to competing in business markets all over the UK and around the world. So how are we getting on with our bit of delivering that future? So we've already talked about Openreach's ambition and we're cracking on with that build, taking full fibre to 40,000 premises every week. And we've got 560 locations that are funded directly by us, and that includes in Dorset, Beminster, Gillingham, Shaftesbury, Mockham, Verwood, Dorchester, Portland, Upway and Weymouth. And at the same time, we're connecting remote rural areas. It's still a massive challenge. So earlier this summer, we said that in order to hit the government's manifesto pledge, 
which I must add is a bold and worthy ambition, the government urgently needs to deliver an effective model for deploying the £5 billion it's committed to the final 20% of the country. And it's comforting to hear Margaret update us more on their approach to the outside in and the framework to deliver it. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more of that as, we, as things develop. But the procurement for that £5 billion can't come soon enough. And it's important that it encourages healthy competition between infrastructure builders so that everyone can play a part in achieving the ambition. And then we want to look at take up. It's another big issue. We can't just build and expect people to come like we did with the Superfast network. It makes no sense to run two networks side by side. So we need everyone to play their part in driving adoption. So whether that's the government moving from services online or providers working to upgrade their customers quickly and smoothly to the new platform. So to close, at OpenReach we have a commitment to connecting millions of premises across the UK, but the UK needs everyone to upgrade to start reaping the benefits that we've outlined in our research and talked about today. And I'd encourage anyone listening to speak with their retail service provider about what options they have to upgrade because you may have better connectivity available. There's real opportunity for Dorset to use full fibre as a platform for growth and prosperity, both now and in the future. And at OpenReach, we really look forward to playing a part in this. So thank you and, and oh, back over to me. Thank you so much, Connie uh, and Margaret earlier for giving us such a, a huge, uh, a huge picture uh, of what's got to happen, what's happening already, the benefits of full fibre, uh, uh, and how it can be rolled out. Um, no questions so far in the chat bar. Would anybody like to just put their hand up and ask a question? Uh, we've got a, a small audience, but uh, probably quite a well-informed one. So uh, Dominic, Elizabeth, for example, or Mark, would you like to ask anything? Rowena, I suspect, knows quite a lot about this subject already, um, uh, as I know that she She's part of the home team. Um, Dominic and Elizabeth, both from. So, yeah, so I was interested in it's a huge ambition, but do we, you know, I've heard about a lot of contractors in the area, but do we have the, the, the number of people we have to deliver this ambition? So delivering fibre to quite a point, certainly in Dorset, like in the areas of Bridport, could be quite challenging. So just wondering how are we up to the challenge? OK, I, I think we are. Um, I, th I think your question sort of like it, it is in, implying that, um, you know, the number of people in the local bodies or the um, local councils, I assume. Um, certainly we're working towards, um, you know, being up to that challenge. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my, in my presentation, we're certainly uh, boosting up our resourcing levels within BD UK and, and we're re re requesting the market actually, you know, um, boost its, its resource levels and, and have as much interest in this as, as possible. Because as Connie said in her presentation, Overreach can't do it alone. Uh, we need as many players in this. Um, and we're looking at, uh, we're, we're starting to talk to uh, uh, local councils in terms of their resourcing level. Um, it's going to take time, um, but we'll get we'll get round to all of them eventually. So there's there's two things really, isn't there? Um, there's whether there are enough people um, able to manage the the contracts uh, and manage the delivery. Uh, and then there's also the question of boots on the ground. Uh, and I, I, I wonder if maybe Elizabeth's question was around that actual um, uh, fiber engineers uh, on the ground able yeah. to deliver because that has been a problem in the past. And it's yeah. a really important point, Elizabeth. So I, I can just talk about f from an open reach perspective. Um, so you know, the, our business is built around our engineers. Um, and already across, we've already recruited six and a half thousand new engineers over the last few years. And we've invested in our own training schools. So we've got training schools in Exeter and Southampton. And that means that we can accelerate the kind of learner journey. We've got simulated streets. We call it an open street. It's a street with uh, what flats, homes, the actual street work environment 
we can accelerate the learning for our new apprentices and we can get them ready to be out and building and you know within within a, a really short amount of time so you know, yes we are absolutely gearing up from our perspective to, to, to have enough trained engineers on the ground working alongside our subcontractors to build our ambition thank you yeah it's more it was my question was more around actual is is boots on the ground to achieve this ambition yeah so we've been gearing up for this for quite a while and we've heavily invested in our in our own workforce and the relationships that we have with, with our subcontractors our suppliers that work in partnership with open reach to deliver it so we're very much ready for for the challenge Uh, thank, you. thank you, Elizabeth. I think I think that um, that is a, a topic close to my heart. Uh, uh, um, uh, I think there's also a question around making uh, training available for other uh, providers as well um, that maybe are not so well resourced as you to be able to gear up in the same way, uh, and for subcontractors as well to be able to come come in. Um, good. Okay. Um, anybody else got a question? We are getting towards the end of our session. Did somebody say something there? No, I imagined it. Um, OK, uh, well, if there are no further questions, um, thank you very much, both of you, for presenting today. Uh, it is it is slightly mind boggling to think of the work and the amount that's got to be done, uh, and especially as Dorset is quite a long way behind the curve, the national curve in terms of full fibre delivery. Um, uh, we have only around four or five percent of full fibre, whereas nationally I know we're at something like 23 percent or 25 percent now, I think. So uh, as you rightly say, Dorset has got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, rural areas and coastal areas and hard to reach areas. Uh, and so we are going to need all the help that we can get, I think, to get to our um, uh, to the government's target of 100%. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. Please do uh, tweet and, and let, let the world know that you've been here part of the, in the Future Fest. Use that ha the hashtag Future Fest. Um, uh, and if people would like to join other sessions, you can still join up uh, on the Digital Leaders website. So um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, for joining us and I will stop the recording now. Thank you. Thank you, Penny.